Women are in the crosshairs, according to the Democratic Party. Republicans want to steal your birth control, sew your legs shut, and keep you shackled to the stove so you don't get carried away by your libido all the way to the abortion clinic. The war on women is clever marketing, but is it total malarkey? Hadley Heath Manning. Well, she is so classy and delightful. She has three last names. She's a senior policy <laughs> analyst at the Independent Women's Forum. Hadley, welcome to the Independent. Whoa. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm so glad you're here. I'm glad you are here to enlighten us because the phrase the war on women drives me insane. Tell me how it is a total fallacy because I'm getting all worked up, sister. Well, it's very important that we do push back against this rhetoric. I've seen Democrats using the phrase less and less because maybe they realize it's not working. It may backfire with certain groups of women, but they still use the rhetoric to try to convince women that America, not just the Republican Party, but our whole country, our society, our economy, that these places are inherently sexist and opposed to women and opposed to women's interests. And that's not the picture of America that, that I see. In fact, you know, the situation is much more nuanced than that. Women are more than half the population. They're more than half of the voting population for certain. So you look at women and it's, it's not really fair to call them one block. They come from vastly different circumstances, different walks of life. They have different issue interests. They have different political ideologies. And so the concept that the Democrats can convince all women with this one political message, or at least target all women as one audience, I think is a fallacy. What is your message, Hadley, to conservatives who it seems like every uh, election cycle cough up a new round of legitimate rape or just a handful of quotes that they just should never really kind of say? I think Charles Krauthammer wrote a pretty good column about this in 2012, saying, I've never heard a Democrat say X, and we know that there's five or six different X's out there. What do you tell conservatives so that they don't step into this trap? Obviously, it's important for politicians of all political stripes to avoid using uh, language that's offensive or even avoid talking about uh, very sensitive topics with sort of a brash attitude. So my first piece of advice would be just don't talk about extremely sensitive issues like rape or abortion or birth control uh, with such brash and, and sometimes insensitive, uh, you know, syntax or language or whatever you want to call it. But my other piece of advice would be to continue to focus on the positive. Talk about what economic freedom can do for women. Talk about the vast array of policy issues where conservatism and libertarianism have a lot to offer women in terms of their own self-advancement. That's a message of empowerment, one that trusts individual women with their futures, not big government. I've seen this thing with conservatives where they've tried to reappropriate the war on women metaphor and say, well, entitlements, that's the real war on women because it fosters dependency. Uh, that seems equally stupid and superfluous to me. Uh, but, but there's something about, uh, I guess, just abortion and insufficient support for, uh, for birth control and contraceptives. Is that the extent of the war on women so far as progressives are concerned? You know, I think a better approach is to continue to highlight how some of these issues that are very sensitive, take for example the birth control issue or anything that relates to women's health care, we can disagree and live in a society together with different cultural backgrounds, different beliefs, different religions, but so long as we don't have to make those decisions as one size fits all. So I, I would say that, you know, the argument Republicans or conservatives or libertarians ought to be making against the, these arguments that women do need a lot of entitlements, do need a, an entitlement to free birth control, for example, uh, is that women are perfectly capable of making those decisions on their own and obtaining the goods and services in the economy that they want on their own. That is absolutely right. And, and you perpetuate this false notion of victimhood when you say that somehow if your employer doesn't, isn't required to pay for a certain kind of birth control, they that you are being shackled. Uh, it, it's so annoying because we can be responsible for ourselves and our own decision. We can be responsible for our financial future. We can celebrate and participate in all of it. And separ separating ourselves, differentiating ourselves by sex does such a great disservice, not only to women, but to humanity. There are also plenty of well, places. Well, I 100% 100 agree. <laughs> Mm. You know, this is this is part of a, a broader a, a broader um, strategy, I think, actually, which is identity politics in general. Because the idea is, if you can divide Americans into different voting blocks or different subgroups, make all of those subgroups feel as if they they should have a victimhood mentality, as if they don't have a fair shot at the American dream. You know, that's the way to to try to ease in this concept of you need a government solution for that's your right. problems, that you're oppressed, Hadley, and that the government that is, that is to help. That is absolutely right, and that's what this show is here for. Free yourself from the shackles. Think Think independently. Go issue by issue. Don't be subjugated based on your gender or your socioeconomic status because that is nonsense. Hadley, Heath Manning, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.
Farragut, the war on crime and the war on drugs are inextricably linked, and we will devote the next two blocks to both from different perspectives. How one cop changed his mind.